Hi everyone, how wonderful, how awesome it is to be together again. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it wonderful serving God? Isn't it wonderful being in love with Him? The one that is your first love in your life, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, being able to fellowship with Him day in, day out, just having so much fun in, in walking a journey with God in such a deep relationship. Before we're going to share on what God has laid upon my heart, let's pray together. Father, what an opportunity. What a great opportunity it is to be in your kingdom, to be accompanying you in everything that you are doing, to be with you together in this amazing plan, in this amazing season that we are living in. We are so excited, Lord, to stand with you and to walk out this journey, this journey of faith, this journey of, of just accompanying you in your plan, in your way. We are so truly in love with you. We appreciate you. We thank you that we can stand in a place of authority, that we can stand and see, and that we can testify and say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Father, we pray and ask that you will truly make the word come alive in our hearts today, that we will truly take the word and that we will that we will walk it, we will live it, and that we will absolutely portray your word and your and your kingdom into this earth and into this place that we are living in. Thank you, Father. We appreciate you and we love you dearly. Amen. I would like to ask you. How many of you have had a project? Let's say at your home, you decided you want to build a house, you're going to add on to your house, or maybe in business where you had to commission a project. So when you have to do that, you have a contractor or professional that's going to come in and he's going to do the job for you. So at the time after everything was discussed and you're at the point of rewarding the, pro, the, the the contract to whoever the professional or the contractor is. At that point, that person stands in front of you and says, thank you very much for the project. We need you to pay a deposit. Now, all depends on the, um, the, the, the value of that project. That kind of deposit can be quite a substantial amount. And at that stage, you are confronted with the reality that I need to, by faith, pay a certain percentage of deposit into a person, a contractor, a company's account, trusting, knowing that they will rock up next week or whenever they say they're going to start to commission the job. Trusting that they will do what they said they will do. Trusting that they are capable of pulling off my project and do it to the best of their ability and to what they promised that they will set out there. And we found ourselves a lot of times in life in that kind of position where we have to pay a deposit and we have to allow ourselves to put our faith in whatever the company or the person is to do that job. And we do that year in, year out. Let's go to the Word. Let's go and let's speak a little bit about faith. God really, truly just came and brushed off again the whole concept about faith. And I want to go to the Word, and I'm going to speak out of the Word, and, and what better passage than to go to Hebrews 11. And I'm going to read to you, and we're going to start there in Hebrews 11, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. And I'm reading there um, from verse 6. Verse 6, and it says, And without faith living within us, it will be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that He is real and that He rewards the faith of those who passionately seek Him. 
Now, I don't know if you understand English, but if I've read it correctly, without faith living within us, it will be impossible to please God. So faith, my dear friends, plays such an important role in our lives. Because if we cannot apply faith, if you don't put our faith in God, it's impossible, the word says, to please Him. We need to put our faith in Him. We need to put our faith in God. And it is important to know who God is. It's important to know His character because we're putting our faith in who God is. And who is God? God is reliable. He is trustworthy. He's faithful, he's true to his word, and he is steadfast. And if we, if we continue in the word and we, and we go and have a look at examples of, of, of men and women in God's word that truly put their faith in him and how that played out in our lives. And I want to go through one or two of these examples and just elaborate a little bit on that. If we read just a little bit further, verse 7. It says, faith opened up Noah's heart to receive revelations and warnings from God about what was coming. So clearly here we see because Noah had a faith in God, because his faith in God, it opened up his heart. It, it, it allowed him to open up his heart in order to receive the revelations, the warnings which God gave him. And because he, he adhered to those warnings, it says further, even things that had never been seen. It says, but he stepped out in reverent obedience to God and built an ark that would save him and his family. So clearly here we see faith opened up the heart of Noah in order to receive the revelation of warning, what God told him. And because it opened up his heart, you could receive. Because, my dear friends, at that stage, something like a flood and rain, and that wasn't yet on Mother Earth. I mean, the earth was, was um, uh, God wet the earth with the dough in the morning. It came out of the ground. So clearly rain was an un, uh, it wasn't something that they knew. It was a completely strange event that would have taken place. A flood was something that they never knew on Mother Earth. But because Noah's heart, because of his faith in God, he, it opened up his heart to receive what God told him. Noah didn't calculate the cost of what it's going to cost to do the ark because by faith, receiving the revelation, he obeyed. He stepped out in faith in obedience because he knew God is faithful. He knew that God is faithful, reliable to, to accompany, to come to be part of the whole project and to help him to commission the whole project. He didn't calculate cost. He just went in obedience and faithfully, wholeheartedly followed God in this whole process. And when he stepped out in obedience, that's when God met him. And he uh, and Noah could accomplish exactly what God's plan was for, for that time and season in which he lived. And then when we move on to the next portion, we go to verse 8. It says, Faith motivated Abraham to obey God's call and to leave the familiar, to discover the territory he was destined to inherit from God. So he left with only a promise without knowing ahead of time where he was going. Here we see that faith in God, the faith that Abraham put in God, put him at a place where he stepped out in faith. He boldly stepped out in faith and just wholeheartedly followed according to the promise that God gave him of a land. So he didn't see that land. He didn't know where that land was, but he stepped out in faith, in obedience, according to the promise that God gave him. And clearly here, yeah, it's very important to see 
as Noah has opened up his heart for the revelation and then in obedience start building an ark, Abram, because of his faith in God and the promise that God gave him, stepped out in faith and start moving, although he didn't see where he was going. But he had his faith in God, trusting, knowing who God is. And he stepped out in faith. People, and clearly, just out of these two examples that we have read, it shows to me they didn't perceive the natural realm around them. They didn't look at what is the season now in the natural realm? What's happening now? Can I benchmark this? Um, does that sound right? Uh, is, is, some, is the playing field in the natural realm um, stable enough for me to move out in faith? No, they did not perceive the natural realm. They only perceived the realm of heaven. They only perceived the upper realm where God operated and moved. Never mind how it looked like in the natural realm. They only perceived that. And according to God's word and the faith they placed in him, they moved. Never mind how it looked like in that time and season in the natural realm. They moved according to the faith that they had in their heart. And people, that's so important in our lives that we will not perceive the natural realm in front of us, but that we will lift up our gaze and we will look beyond this natural realm and we will gaze upon Him, Jesus Christ, the finisher, the author of our faith. Because when we put our gaze in Him, that's when we can step out in faith like Abraham did. That is when we can, like Noah, received the revelation and bluntly obeyed God by building an ark, which was completely bizarre for the time and season. I mean, they they absolutely uh, uh, yoked Noah out completely for building this ark. They didn't understand. They thought he was losing his mind. But you know what? It's when you put your gaze upon Jesus. It's when you put your faith in the one that is your anchor in life, you cannot fail. Because why not? Because it's in his character that you put your faith in. My granddad was a fisherman. And he always went out with his fishing boat out into sea to go and fish. And he always said, my dear friend, don't look at the waves in front of you. You will get seasick. But lift up your gaze, lift up your gaze, look upon the horizon, then you won't get seasick. And that's what we need to do in life. We need to lift up our gaze from the natural realm and gaze upon Him, where our faith is placed in Him in order to run the race. But let's read further about this exciting people who encourage us about how they walk the journey of faith. I want to go to verse, to verse um, 11. If we go to verse 11, it talks about Sarah. It says, in verse 11, it says, Sarah's faith embraced God's miracle power to conceive, even though she was barren and was past the age of childbearing, for the authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise, and she tapped into his faithfulness. She tapped into his faithfulness. Now, clearly, what, what's amazing for me to see between all of this is all of these people we have read had to make a deliberate choice. It's not something that just happened. It's not like you're sitting there and says, yeah, I'm, I'm putting my faith in God and suddenly automatically you just start moving. They had to make a choice to say, because I know and trust my father, because I know he's faithful, reliable, I choose, like Abram, to step out. I choose, like Noah, to be obedient and build her up. And Sarah, 
she put her faith in God. She judged him to be true to his word. Because Pharaoh, Sarah judged God to be true and faithful, she conceived and had the promised child. People clearly, there's a part and a role that we need to play in this whole journey of faith. And all that our God is asking from us is put your faith and your trust in me. As soon as we do that, now some people say, yeah, but I don't have big faith. My faith is not that strong. No, just put your faith in the one who is the great I am, who is the one that delivers, that brings healing, that brings deliverance, that brings victory. And that's so important in life. And that by that which Sarah did, she conceived faith of her faith rested in the one who made the promise to her and she tapped into his faithfulness. She tapped into this faithfulness of Jesus Christ. She, she put a gaze upon him. She meditated upon who he is and upon the promise that he gave them. I want to move a little bit further on when we read in verse um, we. We go to verse 14. It says, For clearly those who live this way are longing for the appearing of the heavenly city. And if their hearts were still remembering what they left behind, they would have found an opportunity to go back. But they couldn't turn back for their hearts were fixed on what was greater. That is the heavenly realm. Man, oh man, not more. It cannot be put more clearly in the word here. Let me read to you again. It says, and if their hearts were still remembering what they left behind, they would have found an opportunity to go back. So what did we, what did we pick up out of the word now here? As soon as I put my faith in him, there is an alignment that needs to take place. And that is alignment is I need to align my heart with my faith and what I'm trusting and, and, and I know God has promised me. And as soon as their heart came in alignment with their faith in Christ, they cannot turn back. They can only look forward. It says in the second part, they couldn't turn back for their hearts were fixed on what was far greater, that is the re heavenly realm. And how many times in life we say, yes, we trust God. We put our faith in Him. And then suddenly something happens in this whole journey where we are trusting God for something in our lives, a breakthrough in, 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 in our physical circumstances, uh, financial circumstances, um, healing. We put our faith in it and then suddenly something happens. And then for a moment we start moving back or we fall completely out of, out of this whole focus, out of this whole faith thing. And, and we turn back and we're trying to make our own plans. People, that's why it's so important. When we put our faith in God, we need to make sure that we align our hearts completely with it, with that faith that we put in Christ. We need to align our hearts in order to look the whole time, to completely the whole time put our gaze upon Him in order to move forward and not to look back and to start making our own plans. And that's why it's so important that we absolutely, wholeheartedly put God first in our lives. That's why your first love needs to be Him. That's why when you have Him as your first love in your life, you know His character. You know His heartbeat. You know that He wants to do great and wonderful miracle things in your lives. Let's move on to verse 17. And it says, Your faith operated powerfully in Abraham. And when he was put to the test, he offered up Isaac. 
even though he received God's promise of this of descendants, he was willing to offer up his only son. Boy, I, I think this is one of the things in the Bible, one of the events that I think Abram was tested to the very most end. Abram was tested here to the very most end. I mean, the son that was promised to him, that he received, which was a miracle at the age he and Sarah already was. And now suddenly he was born. I mean, you can just imagine the jubilation, the testimony that went out. Wow, just look at what God did. And everyone around them celebrated. And there were people that was encouraged. Um, in faith in God, because just look at what God did for Abraham. His son was born. It's a miracle son. And the next moment, God says, Abraham, take your son and come and offer him for me. Bring him as a sacrifice. Imagine that. But you know what? Because Abraham's heart As verse 15 said, because Abram's heart was aligned, was aligned with his faith in God. Just hear what the word says further. Through your, for God had promised, through your son, Isaac, your lineage will carry on your name. That's what God promised was, okay? So now God says, offer up Isaac. But the promise was through your son, Isaac, your lineage will carry on your name. And verse 19, Abram's faith made it logical to him that God will raise Isaac from the dead. And symbolically, that's exactly what happened. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's just, that's how steadfast. Abraham's faith in God was. I'm I'm so excited when I read this because I truly can see how embedded, how truly focused like a missile on its target. Abraham's heart was on God. He just didn't for a second think failure. He didn't think for a second, oh my goodness, here goes my my whole promise. He knew Whatever God asks from him to do, God will come through. Even if he need to resurrect Isaac again. But he knew that if God made a promise, God is no liar, that he will go back on his word. He had his absolute confidence in who God is. And truly, people, we are living in a day and a season. We are living in times where we cannot start and play around anymore. And now we're on a faith journey and the next moment, no, we're making our own plans. No, we need to get to a place where we know when we put our faith in God, we align our hearts and we get in alignment and we boldly start walking according to what God's plan and what his character is, what he's stating in the word. Let's just take this whole time that we're in with this virus, this coronavirus. When it started out, how did we perceive it? How did we align? What went on in our minds? Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, heck, now things are different. And oh, what's going to happen? And Fear crept into our hearts and we thought, oh my heck, how's this going to change my life? And what's going to happen next week? And what? You know what? When coronavirus came in, I called my family together and I said, kids, my wife, we are just going to declare whatever is going on in the world. We as a family, thank you very much, but we will not be participating in this coronavirus. Why? Not because I'm arrogant, because I'm bold, because I know that my faith is in God Almighty, the great I am, the one who is in a position of doing anything, is in a position 
of rescuing me from every circumstance, every thing that can come my way, God will deliver and bring victory. And people, it's time that we stand up in that place of authority, that we stand up and become bold in our faith and align our hearts and not allow the things of the world to dictate us, but to be strong and courageous and with the wisdom and the knowledge of God to guide us and to keep our heart aligned with faith and to keep our hearts clear and open in order for God to come and show and to reveal to us his master plan. And though it sometimes may sound even bizarre, and although it may sound to the world you crazy, like Noah had to build an ark, or like Abram, had to offer up a son. I mean, can you imagine? But yet, but yet, when our gaze is upon Jesus, the finisher, the author of our faith, when our hearts are aligned with his word, with the character of who he is, he is reliable, he is steadfast, he is faithful. How can we fail? How can we fail? And if we keep our focus and our, and our vision upon his vision, upon his plan, we are strong as a lion and we can be the instruments, the sons, the kings, the priests he has placed with inside of us. We can be that and we can run the race to accomplish that which is placed in our lives, which he want us to be. And it is a journey of fun, people. It's a journey of no striving because all it requires, put your faith in me and just step out, my son. Put your faith in me. Just step out in faith. Not one of these guys had to strive. They just bluntly followed and obeyed. And I want to truly encourage you today. Put your faith in Christ, lift up your gaze and obey. Obey whatever he commands you to do. And don't look back because if your hearts are focused and aligned, you will perceive, perceive and see how God accomplish the greater and the awesome things in your life. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, what an amazing time. What an amazing encouragement it is out of your word to know that our faith in you bring the greater works. Our faith in you, Father, ignites your hand to move mightily and to bring about what you want to do through us. We are so excited and this morning, Father, we come before you and we want to stand before you and we assign up anew and we say, Father, we declare this morning that we put our faith in you. We declare this morning that we will not allow our eyes to drop to the natural realm, but we will allow our eyes to lift up and to gaze upon you. We will not perceive the waves in front of us, but we will look upon the horizon. Father, we, we declare this morning, we judge you to be true and faithful. We declare that we will see how you will move mightily in our lives. We are excited, Lord, to grab hold of this whole exciting journey with you. And we know that you will bring about the good and the wonders, and we will stand in awe and it will be a testimony and we will testify of your faithfulness and your goodness. We praise you, we thank you, and we pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Bless you all and may you have a great and amazing week further. Amen. <laughs>